the MG5 EV. Better than Annabelle, drove this car on some of the harshest roads in the Lake District last year and absolutely loved it. This is the new long range version. Is it any better? Let's find out. Welcome to Planet Auto. Here we are at Ridserve, electric vehicle charging station or forecourt really, just near Braintree in Essex for the launch of the 2021 MG5 EV long range. They're just preparing the cars. About to uh, go out for a little drive. I think this is the one that I've got. Superb. It's looking very good. Been an enjoyable afternoon. The MG5 EV long range looks externally pretty much the same as the one that was launched last year. The biggest difference, and this is an actual thing you can see change, but the roof rails are now rated for 75 kilograms rather than 35 as they were before. The back is also the same, of course, you get the standard seven year warranty, 80,000 miles. Reversing camera and parking sensors on this exclusive variant, which costs just under 29,000 pounds. Now I've been given in here very kindly the type two charger and also there is the three pin or granny lead. This one's fitted with the inflation kit, which is standard, but you can also get a spare wheel. The boot size with the seat up like this is 464 litres. There's also an LED boot light in here. There are some metal tie down points as well. The wheel size is 16 inch, and that's the same for all MG5 EVs sold in this country. Keyless entry, of course, in this particular car. See the secret mission documents with lots of interesting notes in them under there. They go in the glove box quite nicely. Trim in here is Artico leather, leatherette, whatever you want to call it. Got some nice MG floor mats for this particular example too. The door tops are hard, but then this car costs less than £30,000. I do like the surface of this though. It looks very smart and the, all the important things that you feel, like the, this, this handle and the exterior handles as well, they feel pretty good. They have a lot more legroom than usual, in a, like in a ZSCV. You do get just very handy armrests and some cup holders too. Twin USB sockets in the back and some door bins as well. Right, the weather's turned unexpectedly epic on what is one of the hottest weeks of the year. So if we climb inside, just want to show you very quickly what's different. Obviously, again, these materials are very nice. Motor gear selector. That button did do something in the early models of the MG5. It showed the battery range, but now it's been blanked off because I think they've realized it's a bit redundant. KERS or regenerative braking switch, and then there's a mode selector. Heating and ventilation controls are physical in this car, which I am very happy about. And here we have the storage compartment, which is a cover for the 12 volt socket and the two USB ports. Look at, look at this slide like that. Oh. It's all very simple in terms of electric vehicles anyway. So if we start this up, possibly in real time, how long it takes for sat-nav to load, because that's something that people have been asking me about, how long it takes for sat-nav to load and see if it's any better in this uh, in this new uh, long range model. Yeah, it's a quite quite a long boot up sequence there, viewers. You can see Android Auto, Apple CarPlay displayed up there. Okay, so you can see my phone is now connected to the car and it's currently charging, so that's fine. Please connect an Android phone Please can't turn the front of the car with a USB cable to start using Android Auto. Well, it is. Now, I've heard from other people that this is actually just my phone, and so it's not a huge issue, but just spare that in mind when you're choosing one of these. Let's have a look at some of the new features in the car then. So, we've actually got a lane assist system now. I can alert, or I can put it onto lane keeping. I can do what I like, or departure assist. We can have lane departure warning or lane keeping, depending on what we want. Audible alert, on or off. Sensitivity is on normal, I'm not gonna fiddle with that. Four collision system as well. We've got that on in assist mode, emergency braking. So that's all very handy. You can see the blue buttons on the end of these stalks here, which indicate this car's got empty pilot. If you look at the main screen, you can see we, we can change the level of regen braking because we're on 78 percent battery. Now if you're on 100 percent battery, you can't have level three regen, just so you know. We'd also change mode we're in here and we can put it normal sport mode back from normal into economy mode and those will give us various battery ranges from 180 miles 172 miles and sport mode 164 digital speed there's my efficiency actually i'm doing four miles per kilowatt hour this car's only rated at 3.6 that's very good that here this is via mg pilot uh, if I were driving, it would all show on here. I expect that uh, Ben and Annabelle would like to be sitting in this seat at the moment, but 
unfortunately they're not able to make it so I am going to have to do it for you. It's a very easy car to drive this, I did have one from MG Motor UK on my own channel last month, the previous version that wasn't long range. Ben and Annabelle of course had theirs in late 2020 and they put it through some quite amazing tests like going up the Hard Knot and Rhinos passes in the Lake District with which it coped admirably. For the benefit of uh, Planet Auto viewers, uh, the mount that you're seeing is uh, just the way it goes um, on this channel. Uh, ben and Annabelle have better equipment than I do so uh, I'm afraid you're just going to have to cope with that. But yes we're on a sort of good road here. I've just noticed though that when I um, just straight out of the line uh, going around the corner the lane keeping assist or lane departure warning came on uh, a little beep. I, I didn't have it on camera but it did sort of come on so it's definitely working there in the background somewhere uh, just to remind me that I was being a bit exuberant in my driving but then of course if you were regular viewer of Planet Auto you will know that Mr Quirk in particular is quite an exuberant driver. It's a bit annoying being stuck behind this, uh, this van at the moment but you know there's not an awful lot we can do about that viewers. We'll uh, hopefully get to some uh, different roads in a bit and we shall see how that goes. The fundamentals of this car aren't really changed, I mean it, it, there's no visual difference between between this and the previous one in terms of the way it looks, even on the inside it doesn't really look particularly different. We've still got this 8 inch entertainment system here, we've got this big, I think this is a 10 inch colour display for in front of the driver which is which is really good, I do, I do like it. The WLTP range of this car has now increased to 250 miles from 214 miles, which is what it was previously. The size of the battery has increased from 52.5 kilowatt hours to 61.1. That means that if you find a 100 kilowatt um, CCS rapid charger, you could charge from 10 to 80 percent in just 40 minutes. Another major difference is the MG pilot system is not fitted to the car. Um, things like lane keeping assistance, adaptive cruise control, which I, I have just used on the, on the motorway. Uh, there's a little bit of that on my own channel as well. Uh, sorry, not the motorway, A120. Um, pedestrian detection, bicycle detection, little blue buttons on the end of the cruise control and indicator stalks now, which tells you the car's got MG pilot. It's a very, very, very easy car to drive because, well, it's, it's just... Sweetest, a little respect, we've gone back in time, but what year have we gone back to more travel? Goodbye, BBC Essex. Do apologise, viewers. Yes, it's very easy to drive because it's just got a single speed transmission. You just put it in drive using the rotary gear selector and off you go. Because I've had one of these on my channel as well last month, I'm very familiar with them and the way that they feel. And I, I don't think there's anything different in the way that this car drives fundamentally um, between the, this and the previous version. It's still got this good driving position, it's still quite soft on the suspension. But yes, it does roll in the corners and things, but it's, it's, it's an estate car, you know, it's not designed for out and out sportiness. And even with uh, the exuberant driving of Mr. Quirk, it really did do very well on that drive in the Lake District and you know in these little twisty roads in the Essex countryside it feels fine I mean I would like a bit more steering feel because it's an electric setup you can put it in sport mode which weights it up for you and I have you know driven a bit in sport mode already today and that is uh, a nice thing I'm also using re maximum regen to help slow the car and I've forgotten how much I enjoy using that because I drive mainly um, just normal petrol cars um, of various ages. Ben climbed into my River 45 V6 having driven one of these mainly for about a week and I was amazed how much I had to brake. 0 to 60, less than 8 seconds in this car, top speed 115 miles per hour and uh, about 155 brake horsepower. 
I don't think that's changed from the previous version. We're on some country roads now and uh, I'm noticing a few things about this car. One of them is that I, I can't work out how to north or intake the sat nav. Another thing is I love the regenerative braking, it is absolutely brilliant. And I know as well the car is fitted with um, auto emergency braking, so if I do you know, get a bit crazy then it will, it will sort things out for me. I had a car pull out in front of me just then and um, I left it off and be regen braking because I'm on level 3 at the moment. That really really helped out but you know I would have stopped anyway if I had not been paying attention which of course I was because I'm a responsible motorist most of the time anyway. Because this is the long range model I've currently got the range displayed in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. It's saying on 88% battery which equates to 201 miles. That would have been under 200 for sure in the older model. You can obviously get that regen meter to sort of fill up a bit by uh, lifting off the uh, throttle, although the regen is not as fierce as it would be in some other cars. I personally would prefer it a bit fiercer, but you know, that's just the way that it is. Some people don't like it at all and they switch it off. It's just really what you prefer. Still a very manageable car in town. Uh, visibility of the front particularly is very good. Reversing camera at the back in this exclusive model doesn't feel too big to sort of pile it around. Mirrors are a good size and because we haven't got any form of gear ratios to change it's very quiet and sort of convenient. It does make an interesting little noise when you're outside and you hear it moving around. That's uh, an EU mandated thing I think. Not of course that we're in the European Union anymore but you know what I mean. Yeah, it's, I can hear it making the noise actually from inside the car. Sort of spaceship type noise. A lot of people looking at this wouldn't even be aware it was an electric car. But yeah, it's just ambling along past all these beautiful old houses, thatched cottages and things like that. And I can see uh, as, as well that it's being aware of the traffic signs and keeping me in the lanes when it can read the lines properly. It's sort of quite pleasant really. I've currently got the cruise control set to 50 miles per hour but I'm actually doing about 30 miles per hour and it's because this DS3 in front of me is accelerating and braking and the car is actually accelerating and braking in tandem with the, uh, the DS3 because the energy pilot system is working, the adaptive cruise is working and it's it's, it's actually slowing me down in front of a car. I'm not that that initial bit wasn't me. Obviously, I'm keeping my foot on the brake because I just thought I'd give you a demonstration of it. So I think what it will do is it will bring me back up to speed again if I just resume. There we go, resume, and it's accelerating back up to 50. You can see the uh, DS3 is still there, and. Uh, the lorries in front of it aren't actually doing 50, so it's going to slow me down when I get, you know, too close. So that's actually what it's already doing. It's slowing me down to 45 miles an hour, and it's keep 43, and it's keeping me here. This is really good on a car that costs less than 30,000 pounds, which of course, <laughs> which of course all models of the range do. I think that's remarkably good. Here we are back at. Uh grid serve. See we're lined up and charging. If you didn't realise it, the charging flap is just on the front here. This is the one that I've been driving. So in conclusion then, the 2021 MG5 EV long range. Well, it's still got the same characteristics as before. Uh, the price has gone up a bit, but then you've got more. You've got before MG Pilot Suite, also got a longer range 250 miles and a 61.1 kilowatt hour battery thank you to Ben and Annabelle for the opportunity to take over their channel for this